As a respiratory therapist or medical professional, of course you must know how to provide care for adult patients, right? With that said, it's just as important to learn and know how to treat and care for infants and neonatal patients as well. To do so, you must be familiar with the common respiratory disorders, and that is exactly what we are going to discuss in this video. So if you're ready, let's get into it. Just a quick reminder, this video is for educational and informational purposes only. The first disorder that we need to discuss is NRDS, or Neonatal Respiratory Distress Syndrome. It's a disorder that is common in premature infants when they are born with lungs that aren't fully developed. It is usually associated with decreased surfactant production at birth, which results in severe hypoxemia. Another one to know is meconium aspiration syndrome. It's a condition in a newborn that causes respiratory distress when meconium is aspirated into the lungs. And if you're not familiar, meconium is a term that refers to fecal matter that is passed by the fetus while in the womb and often occurs due to a lack of oxygen. Another disorder to know about is apnea of prematurity. This is a disorder that occurs in preterm infants which results in frequent periods of apnea that last longer than 20 seconds. It is caused by a physiologically underdeveloped respiratory control center in the brain and often results in bradycardia, pallor, and or cyanosis. Next up is a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. This is often a life-threatening disease in newborns that occurs when the diaphragm does not close completely during prenatal development. It results in severe respiratory distress and requires immediate surgical repair. The respiratory therapist will assist with intubation and mechanical ventilation. Infants with this condition may benefit from high-frequency oscillatory ventilation as well. Also, ECMO may be indicated in severe cases. If you're not familiar with some of these terms, be sure to subscribe because we'll be covering them in more detail in future videos. And as a medical professional, you must know about delivery room management. While technically it's not a disorder, a respiratory therapist must be familiar with the process of delivery and care of a newborn during and after birth. This includes performing an assessment of the newborn's heart rate, respiratory rate, muscle tone, color, and reflexes. You will also need to obtain an APGAR score, which is a system that is used to quickly determine the status of the newborn's overall condition. An APGAR score should be obtained at the one minute and five minute mark after birth to determine what, if any, treatment is needed for the infant. For example, if the newborn has an APGAR score that is very low, it is considered to be a medical emergency and resuscitation will likely be required. Real quick guys, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. It really helps support the channel and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And while you're down there, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well because we have a ton of other videos on our channel that I think you will enjoy. I hope you liked the information that was shared in this video. This was just a quick overview of some of the common respiratory disorders that you should be familiar with. Again, be sure to subscribe because we're gonna be breaking them down further into much more detail. As always, this video is not for clinical use. It was created for educational purposes only, so please speak with a physician for appropriate care for a patient. And if you want to dive deeper and learn more about this topic, you can go to respiratorytherapyzone.com where we have a ton of free study guides, practice questions, and other helpful resources. I'll drop links to everything you need right below this video down in the description. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have a blessed day and as always, Breathe easy, my friend.